Hi friends, welcome to the channel The Dental Educators. Today we will be discussing about the development of face and the different structures which are basically contributing or helping in the complete development of the face. So let's start with the basic things. Initially, the in the development of face, we can see we have three different prominences and processes which are basically represented in this image. You can see here the topmost process is known as the frontal prominence, whereas you have two other prominences which are paired, known as the maxillary process and the mandibular process. You can see you have two maxillary processes for the right and left hand side and two mandibular processes as well. In between these processes, you can see you have a black area, which is the hollow area. This black area refers to the primitive oral cavity or the oral region where the future oral cavity will be formed. That is known as stomodium or stomatodium. So, if you look at the early development of face, it's dominated by the proliferation of the ectomies and chymal cells which help in the formation of the primitive nasal cavity. As you can see these two structures, these are the primitive nasal cavities. Now if you could appreciate here, this is the forehead area. Just below the forehead area, we have the nose. So the primitive nasal cavities are developing below the future forehead area and above the future oral cavity. Now in normally, in normal condition, the nose is always above the oral cavity, so the stomodium will be the future oral cavity. So just above the future oral cavity, you can see the nasal cavities are basically starting to develop due to migration of the ectomesenchymal cells. Now, at the 28th day of gestation, you see that the localized thickening starts to develop within the frontal prominence. Now that thickening initially which was known as the primitive nasal cavities they will convert into large nasal pellicodes you can see these have converted into two large nasal pellicodes as you have two nostrils right and on the left hand side that's why you can see here you have the two nasal pellicodes or the olfactory pellicodes which have developed within the ectoderm of the frontal prominence just below the frontal prominence you can see you have two other extensions which have now developed now later on these nasal pellicodes will change in a big large way you can see in a random way they will be changed into a big structures now if you see here we see rapid proliferation of the underlying ectomies and chymal cells around the pellicodes now the bulge in front of the frontal prominence and they appear to be in a horseshoe shape structure now they are referred as the olfactory pellicodes you can see they are appearing as the horseshoe shape structures now if you see here those small nasal pellicodes have developed into two different blue shaded structures the two structures which are in the center referred as the medial nasal process you can see you have one medial nasal process here the other medial nasal process is here and two lateral nasal processes as well. This is one lateral nasal process and this is the second nasal process. Okay. Now if you see here this black hollow shaped area, this area it's referred as the nasal pit. Okay, we call it as the nasal pit, which is present between the median nasal process and the lateral nasal process. Okay, so basically from those primitive nasal cavities they have help in the formation of the two nasal processes on the left hand side and two on the right hand side you can see medial nasal process and the lateral nasal process on one side medial nasal process and the lateral nasal process on the other side as well now as we just discussed now the nasal pit has two arms one is known as the lateral nasal process which is present on both of the sides right and the left hand side you can easily identify and two median nasal processes as well you can easily identify one median nasal process is this one the second median nasal process is this one now what happens next in addition to that now we will see that the maxillary process that which were far away they will grow medially medially means towards the midline you can see 
they are coming closer to the midline. Now you can easily identify the two MAXD processors both of the right and left hand side they have come closer to the midline. But still they are separated by the nasal processors from the lateral nasal process as well as well as the medial nasal process. Now the grooves which are separating them are known as the naso optic groove which is present between the lateral nasal process and the max ready process. You can see this is closer to the eyes that's why we call it as the nose and eyes naso optic groove. Okay, this groove is closer to the eyes area. Okay, so this groove is referred as the naso optic groove whereas the orange colored groove this groove is referred as the buccal groove the groove which is present between the maxillary process and the medial nasal process this groove is referred as the buccal groove between the buccal region and the nasal region this groove is referred as the buccal groove now later on what we see the two medial nasal processes both the right and left hand side they fuse with each other you can see they have fused with each other and they help in the formation of the philtrum of the lip which is referred as the primary palate. The middle portion, the protruded portion on your lips which you see on the upper lip that is known as the philtrum. So these two medial nasal processes are basically help, helping in the formation of the philtrum of the lip. Soon after the formation of the philtrum of the lip what we see next. the maxillary process and the medial nasal process they will also fuse with each other so till now we can see there is a groove which is present but this groove will be lost so we can say that this groove will be obliterated okay so as we see that this groove is obliterated this will we can see the maxillary process is now continuous with the medial nasal process so a continuous structure can be easily formed which is referred as the upper lip. This is how the complete upper lip is formed by the help of the maxillary process and the two medial nasal processes. So if we see how many processes are involved basically in the formation of upper lip, the maxillary process number one, the medial nasal process number two, the medial nasal process of the other side number three and the maxillary process of the other side number four. So in total we can say we have four processes which are involved and in particular if you look at the names of the processes it is just the maxillary process and the medial nasal process which are basically helping in the formation of the upper lip. Now till now we can see here the lower lip has not formed. We have two separate structure one mandibular process is on the left side one mandibular process is on the right hand side. Now what will happen next the two mandibular processes or the ectomism kinds of the right and left hand side they fuse with each other now you can see they have fused with each other and now they will help in the formation of the lower lip area so you can easily identify that the lower lip has formed due to fusion of the two mandibular processes both of the right and the left hand side both of the mandibular processes have fused with each other which have helped in the formation of the lower lip so now completely we can see we have the upper lip and the lower lip which has developed so you have a hollow black space which will be now referred as the oral cavity because the cavity has formed because of the fusion of the and formation of the upper and the lower lip both of these structures are formed now still we can see we have one groove which is present in between the lateral nasal process and the maxillary process which is referred as the naso optic groove so still we can see this groove is present later on what happens the epithelium inside this nasal optic groove forms a solid core to form up a canal at a later stages that canal will be referred as the nasolacrimal duct nasal lacrimal lacrimal means towards the eye from the nose towards the eye you will have a duct a connecting duct which will be referred as the nasal lacrimal duct so you can see this white groove is extending closer to the eyes why we call it as the nasal lacrimal duct because we have a lacrimal gland which is associated with the eyes okay which helps in the tear production so those tears basically come from the nasal lacrimal duct towards the nose that's why when you have some water or some tears in your eyes you see that 
some water is coming inside the nose as well you start to sneeze as well just because we have a nasal lacrimal duct which is connecting the eyes from uh, to the nose so the nasal lacrimal duct is basically playing a vital role in all of these things so that is how the whole face or facial structures develop by the different processes which are involved in the formation of the facial structures if you have any questions regarding development of face or any other topics which we have discussed you can ask me you can send write down in the comment box or send us an email at the dental educator at the rate gmail.com that's all for today's lecture see you in the next session soon